What is your American dream? I was born in New York. My American dream is music, and DJing is the one thing that I love. My family's from Puerto Rico. I was born and raised in the Bronx. My American dream is to achieve success and prosperity through my hard work. I am from India. I do hope that each one of us realize our own humanity and start helping each other succeed. We are all humanity and that's the least we should be able to do. I am from Poland. My American dreams be close to my kids and my grandkids, be happy, enjoy their life. My dreams are very humble. <laughs> I'm from Suriname, South America. My American dream is to take advantage of opportunities to excel at my talents. Everyone has a right to the American dream. Well, sparring Bernstein has been nothing but great to me throughout my trials. I mean, it's five years into this car accident and um, they never gave up on me, never. And in everything, they fought for me. And I am so proud to tell everyone, don't even wink for a moment. See you sparring Bernstein. My, my lawyer here, Mr. Barack, has been a cage animal. He wanted to go on trial, but thank God we settled out of court and it was something that I'm very, very happy about. So everyone, I'm telling you, I'm not just making stories up. You have to use this law firm. Spar and Bernstein is the best, worldwide best. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, I like that. They just cut the music. They just cut the music. No fading down of the music. No, they should play the music for like cut 30 the seconds while we start. Yeah, they should you know? drop it down right. nice and low right. and, you know. You know, like we have to like come yeah. in like, it's nah. showtime. Nah, you, nah, you ever see like those old shows? It's like, it's showtime. Nah, 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 Stop, 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 man. I've, I've, been got a very, that, I've been doing that for the last 30 This is the Brad and Squeeze Show for those of us just joining us. 93.5 FM and the Brad and Squeeze Facebook Live page. We are live. Go ahead and share. But there's something that I really want to address. Is there an elephant in the room? It's not me. Is it, I'm the elephant? <laughs> you said it. Are you calling me the elephant? I, I, I didn't bring up. I, didn't, you, I said you nothing want, about you, an elephant. You, you, you wanted to address something to me, actually, before the show started. And you said, Brad, I have something. No. It's, it's like so obvious. How many years have I known you? Uh, you've, we met in 1999. Okay. So was that 18 years? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Probably my longest relationship ever in my life. <laughs> you. That's very sad that I am the longest relationship you've ever had in your life. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> let's, not let, let's not get people thinking anything else. By but, the way, very cool sweatshirt. Where do you get one of those? I'm getting to that. Yes. All right, that's what I'm doing. Why don't you show? Because it's blo being blocked actually by your computer. Okay. You have known me for 18 yes, years. Yes, I, I don't have it. 18 years. I don't have the sweatshirt. And folks, for 18 years, this is all that I got from Brad. The elephant A sweatshirt. The Does it this say your it. name on it? All right, as Does people, it say your name on it? As people are sharing on their Does own timelines and sharing on their friends, are you a blue man there? This dude gave me a sweatshirt for Christmas. This is it. That's it. Says Brad and Squeeze. And I didn't get one. It's promoting a show with me and him. I didn't get one. I'm like, you know, I rolled up in the office. There the was money. sitting on a desk. And I told him cashmere. I was like, if you're going to get me a sweat, get, get me cashmere. Squeeze is like, you know what he actually Cashmere. What Squeeze said is. Seen the Seinfeld episode with cashmere? No, no. What, what Squeeze says is, they're not Gucci bread. By the way, yeah. about 10 years ago, you gave me um, a Louis Vuitton luggage. You're still using it? Nope. Lost it. A girl by the name of Whitney I used to date stole, stole it. it. Whitney. Give him, squeeze back his damn it's luggage. Beautiful model. Whitney. IMG model. Whitney. 10 years ago. Whitney, mm. give him back the Louis Vuitton luggage already. Whitney. Whitney. We're not calling you out, but we're calling you out, Whitney. Stole it. With my mm. luggage. All right. Anyway, listen up. Listen to Brad and Squeeze. Oh, shoot. Forgot. Everybody's hearing what I'm saying here. All Did right. you see uh, there, there was a man at, you know, that, that missile attack in Hawaii? Did we talk about it this morning? The man had a heart attack? 
I don't there was no what missile we talked attack. About. Not the, the fake missile attack. Fake missile attack. Yeah. Uh, Sean Shields, we know the fake missile attack. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that went off in Hawaii. Everybody thought they were under attack. Right. They thought it was like Pearl Harbor, except mm-hmm. with nuclear weapons. Right. Uh, a guy by the name of Sean Shields. Can you imagine? Yeah. He, I can't imagine. Uh, you know, do, my, know what my father said? Do they have bunkers? No. I mean, and you have people running everywhere. Running where, where, you, where are you going to run to? We showed it when you were when you were at the hospital yesterday, right? And we were doing the show. We had the video of the people running because they thought you know they were under attack in Hawaii. And I'm saying you know it's petrifying. You're terrified. Can where we the see hell, that video? I'd where, love to see yeah, it. we have that video. Where the hell are you running to? Nothing. What? You know, my father said he goes if I get it. There it is. There's the people running. Where can you pop? Where are you run? Where are you gonna run down the street? <laughs> to where? You know, if you're dead. Well, are there bunkers? I have no idea. Well, I know is my father said he goes. If I got it, he goes. I just look out the window and watch it and <laughs> watch me die. You know, I mean, you know, what are you gonna do? Where are you running to? I go. You're right. Where are you running to? Mm. People are running. Are you so afraid? Anyway, are you afraid God, of dying? What? Are you afraid of dying? No. So I've lived sure. a good life. Positive. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> we'll see you later when you're crying like a little baby, hanging from the uh, hanging from the fifth floor. All right. Um. By the way, a man during this whole thing, while yeah. Trump was on the golf course choosing the seven iron, this guy Sean Shields, a little heavy guy. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, is, probably could lose a few pounds. Is he Irish. He's got his Guinness I, T-shirt on. I don't know, mm-hmm. but he suffered a massive hat heart attack minutes after. Uh, saying his last goodbye over the phone to his 10-year-old daughter because he thought it was just momentarily that he was going to die from a nuclear blast. And Shields, 51, after he got off the phone with his daughter and they said, you know, 10-minute warning, bomb coming in, uh, Shields, 51, started violently throwing up, got transported to an emergency room where he had a heart attack, um, the doctors uh, agreed that the stress from the events had did this. Uh, they told him that they believed he was going to die. He was no longer breathing. He had no heartbeat when he was brought into the hospital. Uh, he never had a heart problem before. Uh, and the stress from all of this and saying goodbye caused this mm. heart attack. Luckily for him, luckily for him, uh, the doctors revived him in the hospital. And he's still in the hospital, but apparently uh, is is recovering. Oh, well, it's good news to hear yes. that he has recovered or he's recovering. Yes. It's very good to now, hear that. Now, also in Hawaii, a lot of crazy stuff happening in Hawaii right now, Squeeze, right. while you ask people to share. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm sharing um, myself, too. Uh, a guy, oh, it, this did not happen. A guy by the name of Ryan. Hmm. In, I don't know if his name is Ryan Hawaii or this was Ryan uh, in Ryan Hawaii. Seacrest? I'm not sure. He he made a he tried to circumvent the baggage fee. You know, like you know, there's the baggage fee. Everybody does. So, that. oh oh no, I'm sorry. His name is Ryan Hawaii, but this was in Iceland, and he went to Iceland for nine days, and he had nine days of clothes. And by the time his trip to Iceland was over, he had no money to pay for the baggage home. He had mm-hmm. the plane ticket, mm-hmm. but he shows up at the airport. You know, he's like you know, he probably drank his last couple dollars at the right. bar in Ireland. And, and now they say you have to pay for your baggage. And he has no money. His credit cards are maxed out. He's just got to get home. Right. So uh, according to a series of tweets, because he didn't have the $90 to pay. I've been to Iceland. I've not been to Iceland. He didn't have the $90 to pay for the baggage. So what he did instead was he opened up his bag mm-hmm. and attempted to put all of his clothes on his body. And here it is. And he walked it, he walked on the plane wearing all of the clothes from his luggage and he left his luggage in the airport. Smart guy. Smart guy. Um, unfortunately for him, they did not let him board the plane. He said he was manhandled by security. They thought, obviously, that he was trying to smuggle something on the airplane, Mm -hmm. uh, and he was uh, ultimately arrested. Really? So not as smart as For trying to wear all of his clothes. Not as smart as we thought. They arrest the dude for trying to wear all of his clothes on a plane. Not as smart as we thought. Is there a law against that? that? I thought that was pretty- Wasn't that an Icelandic law? Well, I guess guess because he had so many layers of clothes on him. What what are all these pictures we're seeing That's That's the dude. 
That's not the dude. That's oh, the that's dude. Him. That is that's the dude. Ryan Hawaii. Yeah, but I, I, but seriously speaking, what law did he break? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer in Iceland. All I know is it was pretty ingenious to open up his luggage and take everything out of his luggage and try to wear it. There he is, Ryan Hawaii. But come on. I, I, he did not break any he law. Was, he was a genius trying to circumvent the baggage rules. They probably arrested him for right. being a little bit did you see, boisterous. Did you see DT, Donald Trump, threw CNN out of the White House yesterday? Mm, no. Yeah, uh, the uh, Ra, uh, Jim Acosta, mm-hmm. in a White House press conference with uh, Donald Trump, he asked, Mr. President, this was his question to the Mr. President. Mm-hmm. Mr. President, did you say that you want more people to come in from Norway? Did you say you wanted more people coming in from Norway? President Trump responds, uh, thank you very much, thank you very much. And uh, Ryan Acosta went, I'm sorry, not Ryan, Jim Acosta went back to him, he said, uh, oh, I'm sorry, is that true, Mr. President? More people from Norway? And President Trump responds, I want them to come in from everywhere, everywhere, thank you very much, everybody. And Jim Acosta then, to be, I guess, a wise ass, but he, you know, this is CNN. Okay, you can't blame him. Right. He goes, just to confirm, Mr. President, is it just the Caucasians you want coming in from everywhere, (laughs) sir? Or do you want people to come in from other parts of the world? And President Trump goes, out! (laughs) And we have the video of Jim Acosta asking this. We have the video of this? I want them to come in from everywhere. Everywhere. Thank you very much, Thank everybody. You, Just Thank you. White Thank you. Sir, do you want people to come in from other Thanks, parts of the world everyone. where there are people of color? Jim, thank you. Out. What happened to your fired? You're fired. Can you imagine? Mr. Trump, do you want, you want, when you want people from everywhere, is it just white people from everywhere? The president goes out. Do you want, do you just want white people coming from everywhere? Or do you want, you know, people of color coming from everywhere as well? This country wants wants colored people? Great question. This country doesn't want people from Norway. Uh, No, President Trump. Don't hmm. don't lump me into this country. No, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about what Donald Trump wants. President Trump wants people. He's from, the president. Right. How dare you stop yes. the president from only bringing people in from yeah. Norway, Brett? Mr. Right? Mr. Trump, huh? is it is it true that you want people from everywhere? Is it just Caucasians from everywhere? <laughs> you can't there make this stuff up, Squeeze. Oh, what are you, yeah, Kevin this Hart? Now? Say, this is what we say about Kevin Trump. Hart said that, right? What? Kevin Hart is it? Kevin Hart that said that? What? You can't make this stuff up. I have no idea. I think, yeah, I think he has a book I have no or a show that said something I mean, like that. You can't make this stuff can't up. Can't make this stuff up. By the way, by people the way, are sharing. They did, they, what? People are sharing. They are sharing. By the way, they did a study recently. Yeah. That one out of every five condominiums sold by Donald Trump since one out of five, one out of what? One out of five condominiums. Okay. Donald Trump built condominiums all over the United States of America. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One out of five condominiums sold by Donald Trump since the 1980s. Uh, violated Treasury Department laws on suspicious transactions for possible money laundering. One out of five people who bought an apartment at a Trump condominium may, Mm -hmm. not saying did, according to the study, may have bought it with laundered money, including including ousted dictator, you know, who baby Doc Duvier is. He was was the... uh, he was the Haitian strongman uh, from the 1980s who oh. laundered, laundered all the all the money out of Haiti, mm-hmm. and he had bought a condominium in, in Trump Tower, mm-hmm. right there on Fifth Avenue, where the police are protecting right now. According to a new report, the Haitian government complained in the 1980s that the former dictator Jean Claude Dovier, if I'm not pronouncing yep. his name mm-hmm. right, Baby Doc, yep. Yep. laundered that's, that's, see that's the name I right, know, right, laundered, yeah. laundered money stolen from the Caribbean's nation treasury by purchases. Purchasing an apartment in Trump Tower, several floors below where Donald and Melania live. Baby Doc was overthrown in 1986, but three years earlier, he apparently used a Panamanian shell company called Lassa Trade and Finance to buy apartment 54K. It's 54K. A few floors down from where they filmed The Apprentice. Trump, the future U.S. President of the United States, signature is on the sale of the condominium contract. Mm. Interesting. 
Can you imagine buying a condominium for 54000 back then? Can you, imagine, can you imagine the President of the United States accepted what a dictator's laundered money stolen from Haiti? And, and how ironic he now, after, after he accepted the money, basically plundered Haiti, yeah. sends all the Haitians back to a plundered nation. Mm. Once again, folks, we're asking you to share the uh, show on Facebook Live, the Brad and Squeeze page. Share it on your timeline, and then also, of course, share it to 50 of your friends, please. We ask that of you as we get to answering immigration questions in a few seconds. The number happens to be 1-800-529-5465. So if you're on the highway, the byway, the throughway, the barbershops, the salons, wherever you are, you can now call the drivers, the five dollar van drivers, dollar van drivers. One eight hundred five two nine five four six five. A lot of the yellow cab drivers listen to us. The Uber drivers, yes. The Juno drivers. By the way, I use Juno now. I use Uber. I use Juno because Juno is a lot less expensive and a lot cleaner and smells better. And by the way, the, everyone who all the drivers say Juno pays better. Yes, they all say but that. The app is very annoying to me. I'm, I've not had any that's problem. My, that's my take on the Juno app. It's very annoying. Yeah, Juno, the cars are cleaner. They smell better. You know, it's the same cars as Uber. There's no difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same people. Yeah. I, I don't know. I guarantee you, everybody who's a Juno driver is also an Uber is it, driver. Is it, isn't yes. it amazing? Yeah. Do you know how much Uber drivers make a year? I do not know. Close to 100 grand. They do well. Yeah, they do, they well. do well. What's going to happen when Uber comes out with their self-driving cars? Hmm. Because that's happening. Yeah, it is happening. It started it's, already. It started already. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. They put all the drivers out of business. Hmm. And then everyone will follow yeah. suit. Did you see this? This is the coolest Uber driver in the world. This guy, Alex Villa. Um, he was in. He was driving in Houston. Hmm. And um, they do have the self-driving taxis already. Yeah, yeah right, right. And there was a remote control car zooming through the traffic on the highway. Did you see this? No. Yeah, watch this. It's very cool. Yeah, let's see. The Brad and Squeeze Show, folks, once again. All right, just on 59, somebody thought they'd bring their remote control car literally on the freeway. Dude, this that's crazy. So someone is... Somebody was in their car. Someone's got to be in their car driving. Driving, and then the passenger was driving the remote control car on, on the, the highway. highway in Houston. Unbelievable. 1-800-529-5465. Once again, as you share the show. And by the way, folks, we talk at the beginning of the show just to get the calls in. We talk about what's happening in and around the world and here in the United States. Um, and, you know, once we get the calls in the queue, we take the calls in the air for your immigration questions. The number happens to be 1-800-529-5465. And by the way, we're shooting to get our concurrent uh, viewers up. To 250 so today. Yeah, so please share, 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 share. Did you get a shave? You got a shave, right? No, I did not. So what did you do with your face? It looked... Uh, Since this morning? Well, when I did ate you, a salad. When did you last shave? I last shaved yesterday. That's what I'm saying. You got to shave. Every Since day. The, oh, you shave every day? I don't. Oh, okay. Right. I don't. Oh. I hate shaving, if anybody knows that. I shave every two weeks. It's very every weird. two weeks. It's really interesting. I'm sure everybody, everybody is glued to their... Their phones. I look a little bit fuzzy right your, now. Worried you about know. your shaving. Habits. I mean, as the better looking guy on the show, I got to clean up, man. Mm. You know. Anyway, let's get some calls, man. Boom, boom. If you really believe you're the better looking person, you don't got to say it. Really? Really. Who came up with that line? I don't know. Okay, you came up with that line. <laughs> you know, I'm a firm believer. Whatever you want, you'll put it out in the universe. It's like Donald Trump saying, "I'm not a racist." He doesn't have to say it every time he says it. It's just confirming. No, but that he is. He did say he's a racist. You don't have. He said he he's said not. it in so many different ways. He said he's not, but it's confirming he is. When he, when you claim, when you say, uh, when you have to say a hundred times, "I'm not a racist," basically you're saying, "I don't know if I'm a racist or not." So I better, I got to make this claim. Okay, so if you say um, you're white, you're saying, what are you trying to say? You're black? I don't say I'm white. Okay. But I don't, I, do I sit there and say I'm white okay. all the time? You no. say you're Jewish? You are Jewish. I am. Okay, so there you go. So, I, don't, so I don't sit there that, and announce that, it all day long. That, that, that doesn't matter. You announce every hour, you're like, I'm the better looking one. I'm the no, better looking one. Not every hour. Well, I think, well, at least once a day you tell me that. Once a year so far, I've done once it. Once a day you tell me that. Once a year so, so far, I've done it. This is the think, first time I've done it. So I am starting to think that you may not believe what you're saying. What? You Are you kidding me? I am believing that. Dude, 
on my frogless day, I'm still a better looking guy. Are you, what kind of look are you just gave the camera? The fraggly look. G- give, give the squeeze like, you know, like, you just look like, um, like give that, that, that. I wake that, up every day and try to kiss myself. Give that middle. look when you try That's to kiss yourself in the mirror. Let's see, look, go zoom in on squeeze. Yeah. And let's see his, mm-hmm. let's see his look yeah, yeah. he kisses the mirror. Mm. He kisses himself in the mirror. I try to make there love to myself, yeah. There he is, kissing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, uh, let's answer immigration questions. I can't, I can't talk about your vanity. Let's anymore. get to immigration questions, uh, folks. We're just giving you jokes. Yeah. 1-800-529-5465. But stop, Brad. I need 10 seconds. What? I need everyone, seriously. The jokes are out now. We're done with the jokes. We're getting down to business. Brad's going to answer the questions a lot faster than he did this morning. I think he was a little bit too long with it. That's just my opinion. He hates it when I say that. But I need for you all, please, share to 50 of your friends. I beg of you. The Brad and Squeeze Show. Make us very popular. There are two guys here, you know, trying to get very popular and also at the same time trying to help a lot of people. And remember, the Brad and Squeeze Show is brought to you by the leading credit repair agency on the Northeast card of the United States. And that is USACreditRepairInc.com. And yes, I'll get to you guys. I called back a few people earlier. I did not get a chance to call back everyone, but I promise you before the day's out, I'll call every single person back. I'll ensure you all get signed up. But right now, it's time to go to the phone lines with Bradster. Richard? Where Hello. Is he? What up, Bridge? He's in. He's in. What's PG County, Maryland? Oh, Prince yeah. George. I should know. PG County means Prince George's County, Maryland. Mm-hmm. How are you? Yeah, I'm okay. What's up? I, know that, right? I didn't know that though. Okay. okay. So what's up, Bridge? What's yeah. your question? What's up? Yeah, um, I'm married to a U.S. C- c- citizen, uh-huh. but uh, um, I'm I'm kind of in. Um, verbally physically abusive relationships i moved out the house like a week ago because she's been threatening me with deportation and all of that and uh, a friend of mine told me i was uh, there was some way i could um, there is a way petition there is yeah you can sell if you're an abused spouse you can self-petition would you be able to share with us or maybe you may not want to would you be able to share with us what was going on in that house with you and your wife what was she doing to you yeah, she was. She was. She wanted to fight all the time. She was using stuff to throw at me, hit at me, and she like, physically hit you. Yes. What did she hit you with her fists or with objects? With her hands and objects. And did you call the police on her? No, I never did. She was the one that always be saying she's gonna call the, the, the police when I do try to restrain her. Do you have pictures of bruises or scratches on your body? Not really. I never really took any pictures. Did anybody ever see this happen, or this is this is you saying it happened? No. Uh, yes. Um. Her, her brothers, her brother-in-law. Uh-huh. You know. Okay. P- people in the house. Well, certainly you know, you're going to need to prove that these things happened. You got to prove you live together, and if you can prove that these things happened and you live together with her. You can file your adjustment as an abused spouse. You can get your work permit in 120 days, and you can get your green card in a little over a year. So hold on one second. We're going to have to have a consultation. I was about to say, much let's move to the next one. Right. 1-800-529-5465. Next call. Raquel in Englewood, New Jersey. Englewood, just over the bridge. Right over the bridge. Mm-hmm. Raquel. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Oh, I'm happy and sad. My, I lost my uncle. I'm sorry. Um, last week I'm sorry. and I sent down um, a letter from the funeral home for his two kids and for my other uncle which is his brother and they went to the embassy this morning and my uncle got it which is his brother and they turned down the kids which is very disappointing that's very sad yeah very. and I what don't you, what we what you would need to do when is the funeral the 27th. All right. So unfortunately, they turned the kids down. We can certainly try to intervene on your behalf, speak to someone at the embassy and see if we can find out the reasons why they were turned down and perhaps give you, give good reasons why that, that decision was, was in error. Uh, you we know. Need, we need to act fast, they though. All, what? They all went in together, and my cousin, which is his son, had a watch on that set the alarm off, and they sent him back outside. So the group split. Yeah. And um, my uncle went to window 19, and when the boy it, came back, he went to window 19, and the only question he was asked is, I'm not, did another family member of yours just went out? 
And he said yes, and he said you're denied. Yeah, it's, um, it's so random what happens there. It's so discretionary. It's, you know, it's like you look the wrong way. You walked out when you should have walked in. Right. I mean, you're dealing here with people and you're dealing with serious stuff. You know, somebody died and, and, and a funeral and people are sad. Um, hold on one second. Let, let's see if we can, you know, you know, if you want to hire us to speak to somebody at the embassy and see if we can reverse that decision for yeah. you. I can't promise you that'll happen, but we can certainly try. Give it a and shot. We've had success before. All let's right. go to... Um, Band, Bandy or Band in in the Bronx? Oh, this is Baldi. Brandy. Right. Yes, Baldi. Oh, Bandy. Bali, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly Bali. Bandy. That's right. Bali. <laughs> yes. Okay, what's up? Yeah, well, good, good, good. How are you doing over there? Fantastic. We're chilly. good, man. We're good. A little chilly here in downtown Manhattan. <laughs> I don't know if it's warmer up in the Bronx, but it's very chilly oh, here. Yes. Yeah. Much, much warmer in the Bronx get... because uh, they're north of us. That would oh, yeah, no even they didn't get outside and uh, but I think no, the snow it's was coming colder. Yeah, north, right? <laughs> yeah. What's up? What can we do to help you? Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your wonderful job and for informing everybody about uh, the immigration concerns this is today mm -hmm. and actually the, in the world. Thank you so much about the picture. You're welcome. W you have a particular question yes. for me? Yes, please. Oh, the passport question I have for you. Uh, I have my cousin. She was married uh, with one guy who lived in the United States. Uh, then the man tried to bring her here. So she sent her papers. She, she go to the embassy. That Where was is she in from? Senegal. Senegal? She's from Guinea. Guinea. No, she's from Guinea. Uh -huh. That's West Africa. Okay, yep. But uh, even that was like two or three years ago, uh, but she didn't, my, my cousins didn't have the visa. And now the guys, the guy go back to Guinea to, to you know, and the, my cousin says, she, she now she's trying to divorce. She make the divorce with her, but she, I don't know what's the, uh, the inconvenience with that. So uh, wait, wait, so basically, can. let me, let me just understand this correctly. Your, <laughs> your cousin, who's a female, was with this guy. She had some relationship. He filed for her. She didn't get the visa. She was turned down. She's still in West Africa. Three years later, the guy served her with divorce papers. Yeah. So, no, you know, the guy, the guy asked the divorce. My cousin asked the divorce with the guy. Okay, so what, what, now what they, would they you, get divorced. what do you want me to do to help her? You want me to help her get a visa? You want me yeah, to help her? Okay. I, I, yeah, I, I, I my don't, cousin, yeah, what? My cousin tried again to get a uh, uh, United States visa. When she, go, when she went to the embassy, they tell her she already have you know, paper over there. So she have to wait for that. All right. Nothing makes sense to me. Who is, is she marrying somebody? Yes, she marries the man who, the man who lived did in the United States. Did the man, the man file man for her? Too. Yeah, the man filed for her. Okay, but she got turned down. So what does your cousin have to do with this now? My cousins get divorced with, her, with the man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This man who married was... Oh, your cousin's the woman in, in Africa? Yes. So yes. now she applied for a visa and they said, sorry. And the reason they said sorry now is because she showed an intent to get a green card. So because she showed yes. an intent to get a green card, they're not going to give her a visitor's visa. They said, you three years ago, you came here to get a green card and we turned you down for the green card. We didn't believe if we're going to give you a visitor's visa, now you're going to go to America and you're never going to return. So that's why they turned her okay. down. I don't have an answer for her off the top of my head, but she would probably need to have a consultation and see. I don't know what we can do to help her off the top of my head, but that's the reason why she was turned down. So hold on one second, and maybe in a consultation we would be able to help her. 1-800-LAWLING. Jody in Brentwood, New York. Jody. Hello. How are you? Hey. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I'm calling because I have a question for a friend. Um, she recently got married last year in June. And she put in her documents. All the documents came through where she got obtained her green card. I mean, her work permit. But at the same point in time, you know, it's tax season time, and she has a child back in Jamaica. So she was wondering if she could file for um, a tax number for her son, and also um, file with her husband with taxes. No, because the child, no, because child's not a dependent. Child's in another country and has no legal status. Once the, child, oh. once the child comes here, then, then obviously you can put her as a dependent on a tax return. So, 
You can't just so start even, taking random people around the world and put them at dependence on your tax or U.S. tax returns. You know, Brad, you have a way of saying. So it doesn't you know. matter if right. she um, actually put him to f like. It doesn't matter if she files with him. At the end of the day, she still cannot do it. No, I mean, I mean, I'm not an accountant, but I don't know how you can make somebody a dependent if they if they don't live with you in in the United States of America, nor do they have a social security number. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. One eight hundred five two nine. You're something else, man. You should be a comedian. I just, you know, you really should. I, I was going to be a comedian one day. One day. One day. In the old age home. When okay. I got nothing to do, I'll, I'll entertain. You're, you're going to be the one entertaining I'll everyone. entertain the people in the uh, commons area. 1-800-529-5465. Oh, boy. to Chris and Rolling. 1 800 Chris. By the way, Chris, Chris, by the way, before we get to Chris, Chris I just there? saw. I just saw Natalie Nichols. You want to know what a great fan she is of the Brad Squeeze Show? She shared so much they kicked her out of the community. She oh, just really? Said, yeah. Thank you, Natalie. We appreciate it. That that's going all the way. Uh, tell her. Tell her. Don't worry. They'll they'll, they'll, they'll let they'll you back bring in. her back in. They'll let you back in, in, in forty eight hours. All right, Chris. What's up? All right, Queen. You said um, Brad should be a comedian. I think he should be a mayor. Be the mayor. Brad, you ever thought about running for mayor of New York? I should be the mayor, mayor. of New York. Mm. Yeah, and squeeze your, your, you know, squeeze your deputy mayor. But squeeze? Nah. How about squeezes the police commissioner? No, 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 nah. no, 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 no. Deputy no. mayor. Deputy mayor. mayor. Deputy yeah, mayor you know. squeeze. <laughs> yeah. That Think has a good it, name Brad to it. 20... Deputy mayor squeeze. You hear that? Brad for 2018. Brad for Brad... 2022. Tw 2022. Brad for 2022. There you go. All right, we got one voter. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All, right. All, right. All right, Chris is the campaign manager in Brooklyn. There you go. All right. He's got All right. All right. What's up? What's up? Uh, and that, that's it. I just wanted to say Brad for mayor. That's it. Oh, that's it. Brad for mayor. That's it. All right. You never know. Chill. All right. Get me on the All ballot. Right. All right. Thank you very much, Chris. All right. Jill is working on that right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many signatures we need for the ballot. Brad for mayor. Speaking about that, what happened what? to the guy that was being deported? Which guy? John? Yeah. He, Gene Montreville? He's yeah. deported. He's he was deported, right? Yes. Yeah, that he's was sent that, back to Haiti. Yeah. There's another guy that was on the news recently, Mexican guy. He uh, got deported too. Yeah. That's After what's being here for 30 years. That's what's happening. 30 yeah, years. Yeah, we talked about him yesterday as well. That's what's happening in the world today, Squeeze. All right, that is what is happening in the world today. It's why everybody needs to resolve their issues. Listen, folks, call this number right now, 1-800-529-5465. Listen to the deputy mayor if you're deputy, if, if you're mayor, you should and could probably do something about that. I, no, mayor actually has no control over immigration. Yeah, you got influence. Yeah, yeah got influence. Got exactly, you got something, you know? Yeah. Influence, it goes yeah. a long way. That is true. You know? Out. Right, as long as you do it right. legally. Out. Right. Out! You're fired! <laughs> Out! All of a sudden, all of a sudden, you know, Gracie Mansion? Yeah. You know, all of a sudden, that'll be like Sanctuary Mansion. It'll be like, everybody's like holed up in there. Yeah, you know? come on over! Ice is not allowed in Gracie Mansion, sorry. 7,500 signatures to run for mayor, Squeeze. Mm. I, oh, okay. you could get that. Squeeze, we have we have over 7,500 people watch us on our live show today. Yeah, you could get that easily. Yeah. You could get that easily. Deputy Mayor! Yeah. All right, I'm gonna start. I'm putting that together. Put it together. Yeah. I put can. that. Put that on our list yep. of things to do. Yep. Okay. I can see you now. <laughs> we we have a whole list of things we got to do. Okay. I a mean, lot. we said we were gonna take a trip to Haiti, mm -hmm. trip to Jamaica, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We were, we were. Uh, what else? What, what else? We were gonna. We were gonna. We were gonna start some different segments on our show. We we're gonna go to Africa. We we're gonna go to Africa. Mm -hmm. we we're gonna become mayor and deputy mayor of New York. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Just put that on the list. Right. We have a list in our production room of all the things we got to get done. Right. Just put that By on the way, list. I really what? took it personal. What? When you said on one of the shows over the Christmas holidays that I should bring back the Christmas prop. <laughs> I really took it personal. You know, it hurt <laughs> me for about three the, days. The Santa hat. <laughs> yeah, I really took it personal. <laughs> You're like, Jill, make sure squeeze bring back there the, the, the prop. I really took it personal. You know, I'm like, this nut job here. Yeah, well, you know, I want you to know it's property of the brand squeeze show. I don't know I'm why. Like, it says know, squeeze on it. I don't know why you think you can take I, the property of the brand squeeze show. And just for the records, it was given to me by Jill. <laughs> All right. Squeezed for the brand for the Christmas show. If anybody didn't see, had a Santa hat that said "squeeze" on it. 
Jill gave it and to then, me. Jill, and said, then, and then Jill I, said, don't forget your hat. And then I saw I'm pictures like, okay. of Squeeze with it in Jamaica. You saw me with it on my head. Yeah. And it said Squeeze. And I said that. And I, I said, I, I said was, that's prop department material. Yes. On, on Instagram. I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> if you were deputy mayor, I would not allow you to get away with that stuff. That would be graft. Uh, that would be graft. How would you say it? I, I, yeah. I, I, all right. right. Jennifer in West Palm Beach. Hello. Uh, hello. Jennifer. And by the way, hello. by the way, Tamika Nelson yes. says you're very sensitive, Squeeze. Jennifer. I'm thin skinned. Yes, Thanks, good afternoon. How are you? I am good. I What's just up? have a quick question to yes. have. I have a half brother in Jamaica, mm -hmm. and he got married to this lady, and she she filed for him and took him into filed for him to come to the U.S. in about a year into him being here in the U.S. Um, the lady family started having problem with the marriage and. She filed for a divorce and divorced him. Uh -huh. He got a two-year green card. Right. And he got a lawyer, and the lawyer happened to have him to have an extension of a year. Okay. Now, the, the, the one-year green card is going to be up in the next two months. Right. And he's trying to get in contact back with that lawyer, which he has paid a lot of money to, but He's not getting it take, anywhere, it take, it not take, getting well, any well, well, It takes 18 months, so it's not like the lawyer did anything wrong at this point. It's an 18-month process. If he needs proof that he's uh, a lawful resident, he can make an info pass appointment, go down and get a stamp in his passport. If he's, if he's not happy with his lawyer, his lawyer's making him anxious, his lawyer's not giving him the answers that he wants to hear. And a lot of times lawyers don't give you the answers you want to hear. The lawyers have to give you the answers you need to know. But, you know, if, if you're not feeling the confidence in that lawyer... You always have a right to switch lawyers. Tell him to come see me or call me, wherever he is in this world. Okay? Okay. All right, hold on one second. 1-800-529-5465. And by the way, Squeeze, Natalie says I would be a mean mayor. I read this stuff, guys. <laughs> I read this stuff. You do? Yes. You do, huh? Yes. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. All right. Would you? Uh, would I be a mean mayor? Mm-hmm. I would be the meanest mayor in town. I agree. I would be extraordinarily mean. I very, believe. very, very, very mean. I believe you. Yes. Vote for Brad, the meanest mayor. I'm very sensitive too. Kimmy yeah. in Brooklyn. 1-800-529-5465. The Brad and Squeeze Show. Once again, remember to share. Let's go to Kimmy. Hi. Hi. How are you? Um... I'm good. I'm actually, this is a question for a friend, actually. Um, I have a friend. She got in trouble, like, for shoplifting. She was right. arrested. Right. However, the case was dismissed. She was when she went back home and everything. Right. Now, her boyfriend wants to get married to her. Now, <laughs> I'm listening. even I'm just if watching she... The comments, yeah. Go ahead. Even if she admits to the um, the arrest, will it be a problem? She, like, has to admit, she has to admit to the arrest. If you don't admit to arrest, right. you've got a big problem. What was the arrest right. for? Um, shoplifting. Yeah, well, it's, uh, should she go to jail for this? It's probably a petty offense, but she has to absolutely admit to it. Yeah, she got, I think she got a ticket and it was dismissed and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has to get the disposition and admit to it. Absolutely. Hold on, because she's going to need help. Hold on one second. All right. And uh, you know what? Uh, you want to go to uh, uh, Rapid Fire Kim? Yeah, let's find RFK Let's right find now. RFK. Rapid Fire Kim? Hello! Hello, Hello! my Hello! fair lady. <laughs> you, are, you are talking to the future meanest mayor and nice deputy mayor of 2022 <laughs> of the city of New York. Handsome deputy mayor. The most handsome deputy mayor yeah, to yeah. ever walk on the face let me stroke myself here. Yes. You know? I, I feel like 7,500 signatures is totally gettable, Yes, Brad. Yes, squeezes, I get that squeezes, squeezes campaign pledges, free manicures One for everybody. One tweet and I got All it. All right, that is, that is his campaign pledge. Everybody gets a free manicure on squeeze. Ooh, you got my vote. Yeah, that's it. I mean, can you imagine you're like, free manicures for everybody. Everyone's like, yeah, I'll vote for that one. Perfect. <laughs> if we could get that on the ballot. I mean, it's vote, so it simple. Be... It's so simple. Why spend millions of dollars on infrastructure where you could just give everybody a $10 manicure and they would vote for you? <laughs> all right. All right. What is, uh, what is, what is your questions? Okay. Shelly wants, 
No. I've been applying to the U.S. Embassy for a while now, and I've gotten turned down each time. Can I reapply now? It's been about two years. I'm working. I have two kids. I have my own house. I'm a yes. part-time student. Yes. Do I have enough ties? Yeah, sounds it. And if you're still being turned down, give us a call. Natalie wants to know, my son was filed for by his stepmother when he was 14. He's now 16. Is he going to have to file for his own citizenship five years after he got his green card? Yes. Um, once you turn 18, you do your own citizenship. Uh, don't forget to share, everybody. That's what we're doing here. All right, is that what Squeeze is doing? Yeah, share. So when, when Squeeze is looking down at his phone... Maybe we should be at a split screen, or maybe people should. You, you want to get a camera on my phone? Yeah, let's see, see what's going on. What's going on on your phone? I, 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 <laughs> can we get a camera on Squeeze's phone. Yeah, okay. that would that would be great if we have like the Go Can't Go GoPro or something. Uh, right? like, that's yeah. what he's looking so at. That's what he's looking at. <laughs> Squeeze is looking at bikini bottles on Instagram. What's going on here? All right. I would like to shout out a couple of our followers who were, so apparently the U.S. Embassy in Jamaica does a live stream every day, and a bunch of our followers went to the live stream today and told people to come watch this show. Who's better than <laughs> that? Who is better than the Brad Spot and Team Squeeze? I'll tell you uh, this, way, I know so many people that work at that embassy. Yes. So I don't even know, what do they do a live stream of? What do they do? I don't know what they do, but I don't yeah. even know what they're doing. Uh, but all of our people said that they do not give answers that are nearly as in depth or cover everything oh. that they need to cover. Oh, they as think they're going to pull a brat that the Jamaican they U.S. They embassy out is out you? Brad and squeeze? They can out, out Brad and squeeze us? No, of course not. not. No. <laughs> Be careful. Christy we might just go to fiction and do a live show one That's day. That's right. And really Ooh. show him up, you That's know? That's right. They they wish they, were, they had yes. Brad and squeeze. That is right. Chrissy Boo wants to know, my husband filed for my daughter in August of 2017. How long before she gets here? How old's your daughter? You know, I don't oh, have no. that info. We don't have that info. Need to know. All right. Need to know. Wyclef, Wyclef needs to know. Yes. Can you apply for a green card as an engineer? Yes. If you have extraordinary ability or you have a job sponsor. Candy uh, Candy wants to thank Squeeze for helping her husband with her credit. She saw progress in just 30 days, as promised. Squeeze, continue, please. I, I try. That's, what, that's all I do. Squeeze. I, I try. Squeeze. You know, I try. People Squeeze. don't believe me, and I People tell them. People don't believe it. You know, we have a there very, very good team, and they've been helping a lot of people where credit is concerned. All I've got to say, if you have never spoken with USACreditRepairInc.com, call them right now. I don't care what your credit score is, just call him for a free consultation. What's the number, Brad? 1-800-872-7177. That's 1-800-872-7177. People are watching our show every day. They're calling USA Credit, and literally in 15, 30 days, their credit's shooting through the roof. And they're coming back and leaving comments. They're calling our office. They're coming in. They're yep. seeing squeeze. We are seeing result after result after result. Yep. So call them right now. It's a 30-day 30 uh, day what? Nothing? It's a free consultation. Your yep. credit's going to go up. You should be damn happy that's happening, right? They should be very, 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 very happy. Very, you shouldn't, very, you shouldn't very need happy. any more than that. Okay? Call so, right now. USA Credit Repair. 1 800 872 7177. 1 800 USA 7177. We hear it time and time again. My credit goes. They, give you, they do give you a 90 day money back. That's no joke. I mean, that seriously. If your credit's not up in 90 days, but they never even need 90 days. USA your credit's credit going up no in joke. 15, 30 days. 1-800-872-7177. Squeeze ain't no joke. USA and that's Credit not even good no, grammar. U USA but, Credit Pray is no joke. And USA Credit's no joke. 1-800-872-7177. 1-800-872-7177. All right. Rapid fire, Kim. Uh, Chrissy Boo, whose husband is filing for her daughter, uh, who filed for her last year. Her daughter is six years old. So how long do you think that'll take? Oh, less than a year from now. Sprout wants to know, after sending DS-260 uh, for an F2A, how long does it take to get approved? Uh, there is no approval for the DS. That's just the processing. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on what your priority date is. That's when you would get a visa appointment. Barbara asks, can you file for your mom alone? She is married. Yes. 
Pasco asks, my cousin was married in Jamaica, came to the U.S. to live with her husband, who after a year filed for divorce because she, uh, right after she got her one-year extension. What is her next move? You uh, submit the divorce to immigration, request that they change the I-751 to a waiver application. Khadijah asked, my husband had his interview in September of 2015 and was denied. The case was sent back to USCIS. It's an I-130. Can you hurry them up in any way? I'm a U.S. citizen. Uh, you would start calling me now because they don't believe it's a real marriage. It's not about hurrying up. You, I mean, you got big problems on your case. Adrian asked, how long does it take for an advanced parole application to be approved? 120 days. And Oma asks, Good. my friend, my friend, wow, that whom was a, that sounded, like <laughs> me. sounded like me there for a second. I thought I was the only loud one. <laughs> I got to compete, Brad. Yes, yeah. right. Oma asks, my friend who had filed for her husband to adjust her status here in the U.S., her stepson is threatening to call immigration on her and report her status, and she's here undocumented. Is there anything, does she have to worry about something? Is that possible? Yeah, anything is possible. Um, you, anyone can threaten anything you want. We can call anybody you want. The odds that anybody's going to follow up on some stepson's threat or even call is very, very, very minuscule. I wouldn't lose sleep over it. And finally, we've got some theories as to what exactly Squeeze is doing on his phone. Okay. Uh, a few people thought it was Candy Crush. Top 10 crush. things that Squeeze could be Candy doing. Crush. Top oh. 10 things Squeeze could be doing on his phone. Candy Crush? <laughs> Candy Crush, but the overwhelming consensus is that he is waiting on a text from Whitney to get the luggage back. Waiting on a text from Whitney. <laughs> the number one thing Squeeze yeah. is doing on the phone. Get the luggage back. Waiting on Whitney for the luggage back. Yep. <laughs> I had some other things too. Okay, he was he was he was he was, he was ordering some sushi. Nope. Yeah. Okay, he Wasn't was that? he was liking some bikini posts on nope. Instagram. <laughs> nope. No. Reviewing Juno on Ru Google? Yes, he was. He was checking his American Express charges. Uh huh. Right. That's a good one. That's a good one. You know. Yes. You know. Yes. Yeah. You know. Uh huh. To 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 have a conversation with VIP. That is, that is correct. You know? That's a good right. one, Brad. He was swiping right on Tinder. <laughs> no, I don't do Tinder. He was swiping right on Tinder. You're like, yes. I don't even yes, know. What, what's the difference? No. Tell it. Yes. What? No. Explain Tinder to me. What, swipe what right is you like, swipe left you don't like. Oh, okay. So he's like, yes, 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 no. <laughs> you know, he squeezes a three for one. He goes, yes, 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 no. What? Yes, what? yes, yes. You, you know what? My fair lady, someone told me once. <laughs> Your fair, the, my the fair swipe lady. swipe right. The swipe all the way to the right all the time. Someone. Give numbers. A wise a man, a a wise man told me that. It's a game of numbers, Squeeze, right? My fair lady. It's all about the numbers, right? My fair lady. Give right. us now, my fair lady. I like it. <laughs> all I'm right, thank you very much. Fun. We're going to go to Louisa in Manhattan. We're going to be we're gonna be joined by David Moreno in our criminal defense department. Louisa. Yes, I have a question. I would like yeah. to know how long, how long would it take to get a divorce if we are both U.S. citizen. I just want to know how long it would it For take. For uncontested divorce in, in New York, depending on what county you are, sometimes it takes 12 months. In Manhattan. In Manhattan, it's going to take, you know, six, eight months. If you're doing an uncontested and you have nothing to fight over, a lot of times we go upstate to one of the counties where nobody lives and there's no nobody filing divorces and judges got nothing but to I do. And could take, you can, you I can, can always pick, divorce. You, I can always get a any, divorce. Yeah, but you can pick a county in New York as long as you're not fighting over anything. And you know, mm -hmm. pick the fastest county. But it's not gonna be contra descendant to to me or to him. Not gonna be what? It's not gonna be. It's yeah, not gonna harm. It's what, harm for what? I don't know. I mean, how things are nowadays. You never know what's gonna happen. But I'm, I am a U.S. citizen. He's a U.S. citizen. No, no, no. You're allowed to marry and get divorced anytime you want. Hold on one second. We can yeah. help you. Okay. Hold on. All right. Ready to find the other attorney? Let's find the other attorney. The other attorney. Wasn't that like a movie? The other attorney or the other guys or something? Mm. No. I don't know. Is it, do we have another attorney? You know, here? it's... It's it's, uh -huh. it's amazing. Everybody what? calls after you mention the... Um, you mentioned that credit thing. It's like people just want to know that other people are... That, what do they think we are over here? You think... Would they think you're not a joke? He, they think you're a joke? He's no joke. He's no joke, Everybody's squeeze. calling USA Credit Repair now. 
Because you're know? no joke. You know, it's like. By the way, we must. Have, you must have got thirty calls because as soon as we said it, no, thirty people. No, it, it was thirty. It's twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty-nine calls. Yeah. 29 calls. Yeah, because that was about the number of people who dropped off from watching our show. Yeah. yeah. You you do algebra? I do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. David Moreno, our criminal defense attorney, is ready. And this segment is brought to you by USACreditRepairInc.com. All right. It's also David. brought to you by our criminal defense department. Squeeze yes, I was, I was about to get to that. <laughs> okay. And it's the criminal defense attorney, yes. David Moreno. How are you, man? Hey, good morning, guys. Good afternoon. How's everyone? Good afternoon. All right. So David is fresh off a uh, verdict in his favor in Nassau County for a DUI case. Okay. Uh, last week. Spoke about that. They went that. to trial. Yeah. And now he's here to talk a little bit generally about driving under the influence. Right. Nobody wants anyone to drive under the influence. Nobody shouldn't be drinking and driving, period. Nope. But God forbid you do get pulled over. You still have rights. Is that correct, Mr. Moreno? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so, so we always hear, by the way, hmm. we always hear, you know, I got a DUI, I got a, uh, a DWI, right. and then there's another one. Uh, uh, DWAI. DWAI. Yeah. What do all these things mean? Sure. Uh, so this is basically, in specific to the context in New York, the laws in New Jersey are different. Um, maybe Jay Cudnut can share with you guys the laws in New Jersey, but in New York, when you're referring to a DUI, there is no per se vehicle and traffic law code that correlates with that. When somebody's saying a DUI, um, what they're usually referring to is uh, driving while ability impaired, which is the violation. It's not a crime. Um, oftentimes, uh, DWI cases are pled down to these. Um, and DWI you, you leave, is the more serious of the two. Yeah, so DWI stands for driving while intoxicated and then driving while ability impaired by alcohol, two, two totally different things. Um, so with DWAI, what the people would have to prove if they were trying to uh, show that you were ability impaired right. is that you were operating a motor vehicle and you were doing so while being impaired to any extent Squeeze, by alcohol. Who are you texting, Squeeze, now? What are you doing? Okay, thank you. It should be two. Two. Keep going, David. I apologize. You want me to stop doing no, what no, I'm no, doing? No. Stop sharing? No, 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 Keep sharing. I want yeah, people to you. know yeah. David thank Moreno. You. Yes. You Keep know? going, David. I apologize. <clears throat> All right. And then driving while intoxicated, um, that is your, your basic misdemeanor charge where your blood alcohol content uh, is over 0.08 or higher. And then there are several felony DWIs. Um, there is the bump up DWI for having more than one within the last 10 years. And that also uh, reaches out and includes um, driving while impaired, even though that's non-criminal. And then there's also uh, driving uh, while intoxicated aggravated, which is if you have more than 0 0.18 uh, percentage of alcohol in your blood. By the way, the, te um, the telephone number to reach David Moreno is the same telephone number as our office. It's 1-800-529-5465. You should always have a good lawyer saved at your phone. Always. one 800 Five two nine five four six five. You pick up the phone. You dial the number. The smartest thing in the world you can do is dial the number of a really good lawyer. This guy just took a case in Nassau County on on a DWI and, and he beat it. Now we're not we're not condoning drinking and driving, but certainly you you know if you, God forbid you're in this situation, you want to have your rights protected. And here's a guy who's protecting people's rights every day. So please save the telephone number of a really good attorney. His telephone number is one eight hundred Law Link. It's one eight hundred five. Something to Two, nine, five, four, six, five, and Squeeze would like to say something. Uh, what I'm, uh, I mean, just a f uh, we had about 50 people who just logged off, and I'm being very straightforward here. What I was just typing on my computer when Brad was being nosy and asking me what I was doing, I was actually telling people that most of these people believe that they'll never, ever have a run-in with the law. They just believe that they, they, nothing bad can ever happen to them. People believe that that's possible. But I'm quite sure it, it's going to happen to you, someone you know. It's just when. And you don't have to be a bad person for things to happen to you where the law is concerned. And, and, and by the way, I just have to tell everybody that prior successful results don't do not guarantee, guarantee a similar life. outcome. Mm -hmm. And this is an attorney advertisement because we only have about three minutes left on WVIP. But, but uh, David, let me ask you a question. Okay. How yes. many of our clients come to you and say, I didn't think I'd ever need an attorney. This is their first time they've ever got arrested. Yep. 
How many times? I'd say ninety five percent of them. Ninety five percent of them. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, "I'm going to get arrested today." Yeah, exactly. No one. Even those who are actually doing nefarious things. Don't expect to need a lawyer. People who get arrested are generally not career criminals. Exactly. People who get arrested Correct. are just are, are a lot of times in the wrong place at the wrong time or just do something really stupid and they shouldn't right. have. They're not career criminals. Yeah, temporary and you insanity. Need, and you need good criminal defense attorneys. Right. So call this number. I want everyone right now, stop what you're doing. Take 15 seconds out of your time. Dial this number, 1-800-529-5433. That's the number to a good criminal defense attorney, David Moreno, 1-800-529-5465 at the law offices of Spar and Bernstein. You never know what can happen to you. And I'm saying to each and every one of you out there, dial the number, save the number, especially my immigrant community. Everyone, but especially my immigrant community. 1-800-529-5465. One of the things I love about this law firm, you've got immigration attorneys, you've got personal injury attorneys, You've got criminal defense attorneys, tax attorneys, family law attorneys. We're here to help you. So save the number in your phone. 1-800-529-5465. And we're going to continue with our conversation on WVIP. We're going to be cut off for about three minutes in commercials. And we're going to continue. We with are? Da- yes, we are. With David on the other side. But David, let me ask you a question. You just okay. you just defended a DWI case. You won the case in Nassau County. Mm-hmm. How do you go about defending these cases? Well, I analyze them from a case-by-case basis. Uh, it depends on the facts of each case. Each case is very different, and it, they require different approaches legally. Um, but generally, if if there is a refusal, for example, um, the way to defend that case uh, and the best way to go about that is to mitigate as much as possible the other perceived signs of intoxication, right? Which are what the common common law ones, Brad, the slur speech, the uh, bloodshot watery eyes, the uh, unsteady on the feet. So I, in, in, in that case specifically, and, and in every other case I've had a refusal, I get the officers to admit and to acknowledge that, you know, uh, bloodshot watery eyes alone is not an indication of whether or not somebody's been drinking, right? Someone can have dark eyes naturally. Uh, some people, um, you know, wear contacts that irritate their eyes. Some people have had lack of sleep. And I go down the list for each and every one of those those uh, observations. And every last one of them, including, which most people don't know, is odor of alcohol on, on the breath. Odor of alcohol on the breath is evidence of nothing. You can't tell, you know, if someone has had something to drink, how much they've had to drink, had to drink, when's the last time they had to drink, just because they have an odor of alcohol in their breath. It could so, just be from their with, stomach. People get It could stomach. just be from their stomach. Right. It can be odors from other uh, other things that people have drank. It could be from even things like gum, could get, make your mouth smell like alcohol, uh, some things that you eat. Um, so I, I would go down and, and break through each one of those actual observations to show that you know there may be other reasons for my client's behavior, uh, and one is one big one that a lot of defense attorneys use is just the the normal nervousness uh, of being pulled over by the police uh, causes folks to act sometimes in ways that are inconsistent with how they would normally act, um, and that's a big one. So, in your particular case that you just won in Nassau County, what would what was your your client facing in terms of the charges against him? What mm-hmm. were the facts that were presented at court? Was he looking at one year in jail, three years in jail, five years in jail? Did he have an immigration issue? By the way, if you're convicted of a DWI yeah. for immigration, that's deportable. DUI is not in New York State. So what were the specific facts? What was he looking at? And what did you do specifically to help him? Of course. So he was looking at up to a year in jail. Um, he was looking at uh, significant fines over, you know, two thousand um, dollars. He was looking at revocation of his license for one year. He was looking at having to place an ignition interlock device on any vehicle he owned or drive for the foreseeable future, um, as well as completing a bunch of other mandatory uh, drinking while driving programs. That, those were the penalties he, w- he was facing. Um, the facts, and he also was facing immigration consequences. Uh, the client in question uh, was a green card holder, not a citizen of the United States. Uh, the facts that led to his uh, arrest were that the officers observed him allegedly uh, driving unsafely and moving unsafely between lanes. And when they pulled him out of the car, they alleged to have smelled alcohol. 
and uh, they noticed that his eyes were, were bloodshot, and uh, he did not follow the instructions. Um, and I think I spoke about this a little bit last week, but one of the interesting and pertinent uh, arguments that they, they presented in support of him being drunk was that he did not do every single thing the police asked or told him to do. And that's important because, you know, you have a constitutional right to be free um, from any, any search or free from any interrogation uh, with the police without an attorney present. Um, you absolutely should not incriminate yourself. And our client was smart enough to not do that. Um, and that really, really helped and aided me in, in, in presenting a very cogent, incredible case uh, that he was not, in fact, intoxicated. And, and you were able to convince a jury in Nassau County, I assume, what was, what, what was the background of your client? He was Jamaican. He was Jamaican a Jamaican descent. guy in Nassau County, which is predominantly a Republican white <clears throat> suburb for people who don't know. So that was a fantastic job on your part. And it show, goes to show what good lawyering does. Good lawyering gets good results. Poor lawyering, inconsistent lawyering, lawyers who don't care, eh, don't get as many good results. Obviously, prior successful results don't guarantee a similar outcome. I also believe that you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for also. But David that. Moreno, that was a fantastic job. Squeeze, if you can give out the number one last time. Absolutely. And we're going to thank David for coming on. 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-529-5465. want to remind everyone, please, store that number. As much as we go back and forth here on the Brad and Squeeze Show, we must remind you, that is the number for the law firm located here in Manhattan. 1-800-529-5465. And the Criminal Defense Department covers New Jersey and New York and federal cases. Correct. And we have just opened up an office in Hartford, Connecticut. One on Congress Street. On Congress Street in mm -hmm. Hartford, Connecticut, about three but blocks not for from criminal the defense. Uh, yeah, criminal defense. Okay. Everything. Well, every, oh, everything. Cool. cool. All right. 1-800-529-5465. We have Andrew Nett from Biloxi, Missouri. Okay. Biloxi. Biloxi. It's not Missouri. It's Mississippi. Yeah. Biloxi, Mississippi. Biloxi, I was about Mississippi. To say. I got yeah. that wrong. Yeah. And uh, let's speak to her. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know what else we got in, in the hopper, what Jill Surprise has. It's, 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 uh, surprise, uh, it's the Jill Surprise Day. I don't know what we're going to see. And then we're going to talk a little bit about USA Credit Repair. I'm ready. You ready? All right. Andronette in Biloxi, yes, sir. Mississippi. How are you? How are yes. you? I'm good. I have a few questions for you. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. This is my second rodeo with uh, immigration. Uh -huh. The first case I had with them, I had to take a restraining order out on my husband like two weeks before my interview, so he didn't show up. Right. They gave me a chance to file again, but then I didn't because that was too much. Okay, we divorced, and now this is my second time with them. What can I expect from them with my new husband? You can expect proof, you know, to ask proof that the first marriage was real and proof that the second marriage was real. That's what you should be expecting. Hopefully, okay, so hopefully you chose better the second time around. So you and your husband will, will, will be going in uh, and have a nice interview. And obviously your husband loves you and you love him and, and you know, everything will work out. Okay, so do you accept ongoing case? Because yes, we do. I did my paperwork myself. No problem. We accept okay. cases from not that not only that are ongoing, but we accept cases from Biloxi, Mississippi. So hold on one second. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. One eight hundred five two nine five four six five. That's one eight zero zero five two nine five four six five. And uh, what are we going to do now? Squeeze. Uh. All right, so we're going to do a man on the street citizenship. What the hell is going on? What happened to USA Credit Repair? We're going to come back to USA Credit Repair after. Man on the street. People love man on the street. Don't worry. This will work out well for it's you. It's after one. It'll help work out well for you. Let's watch man on the it street. It never does. It works out well. This is Kim Moore from the Brad and Squeeze Show. And today we are asking New Yorkers questions from the US citizenship test. Let's see if they can pass it. What is the supreme law of the land? What is the supreme law of the land? Like there's just a one big thing that's like the supreme law, like the supreme being. Jeez, what is the supreme law of the land? Uh, freedom of speech, I guess. The supreme law of the land, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Equal rights. Uh, 
got me. I'm feeling really stupid. The supreme law of the land is the Constitution. In other words, all the laws derive from the Constitution. How many amendments does the Constitution have? 50? I don't know that one. No, I have no idea. I'm sorry. 21, 20, I don't know, 15? I have no idea. How many is there? There are only 27 amendments to the Constitution. It's usually a pretty big deal, and we pretty much remember all of them. What are the first 10 amendments of the Constitution called? Declaration of Independence? I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> the first 10 amendments of the Constitu Constitution? I have no clue. The first 10 amendments of the Constitution are called the Bill of Rights. Freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, the right to bear arms. The idea of self-government is summarized in three words in the Constitution. What are those three words in the Constitution? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> if you don't know, the three words are we the people. How many justices are there on the Supreme Court? Three. Three justices? I don't know. Um, ten? Um, I'm not too sure how many justices are in the Supreme Court. You want to take a guess? Twenty-five. There are nine justices on the Supreme Court. Not 16, not two, not three, nine Supreme Court justices. What does the judicial branch do? I'm sorry, what is that? The judicial branch? Do they levy the taxes? <laughs> <laughs> judicial branch makes judgments or legal decisions on, I guess, I don't know if it's local or state. The judicial branch reviews laws. They interpret the laws, make the laws, and resolve the issues. When there's a case that's in front of a judge, the judge will identify the particular laws that control that case. So when a case comes before a court, it is the court's job to resolve the issue, make a decision. What is the economic system of the United States? Can you further explain that question? <laughs> yeah, like how? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to lean toward communism. Certainly not communists. Communism is actually not even an economic system. That's kind of a political system, a governing system. The economic system in the United States is the market economy. That means that we are capitalists. What is one power of the federal government? Good question. The federal government makes uh, decisions on taxes. No? I don't know. I'm afraid I don't know. I don't know either. One federal power is to print money. Only the federal government can do that so that as a country we have one monetary system. The interviewer will have a list of 10 questions. Only six of 10 yeah, need to be answered correctly. So you get the first six right and that's it. That's all the officer wants to know. Prior successful results do not guarantee similar outcome. All right, Squeeze says USA Credit Repair is short 100 telephone calls today. 100 telephone calls. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you want to do? What I will do is I will continuously call 1 800 872 7177 100 times. 100 times to satisfy my contractual obligations mm -hmm. for USA Credit Repair. All right, so, so what do you want to do? I'll let you give it a special. Let's, let's, let's do it. 1-800-872-7177. 1-800-872-7177. We've heard it for time and time again. People who have bad credit have called our show, and they have said time and time again. Over and over. In 15, 20 days, their credit went up 100, 100 plus points. I just saw Tamika in our comment section said, they got my credit up. Yeah. Candy got my credit up. I just had this lady come in yesterday, got my credit up. Yep. It was the other the lady the other day who called in and said uh, uh, there was 140 in under 30 days. Right. So call USA Credit Repair right now. Now, prior results are not guaranteed the so the outcome. Right. The yeah. only thing you mm -hmm. have to lose is a lower credit score. It's the only thing you got to All lose. Right. Here's what I'm going to do, Brad. Call right now, 1-800-USA. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let everybody know exactly what I'm going to do right now. But I want to see the calls coming in. I'm going to get off the air 
I'm going to go to the little boy's room. I'm going to tinker. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the office and I'm going to speak with every single person that calls Fine. USA Credit Repair. You do that. All right. However, I need to see the calls coming now so I can tell you who I'm going to speak with. I'll you? be able to tell you the numbers right now. All right. The number to call right now and everybody will get a free consultation. You'll know your credit scores. You'll know all the negative infractions that's on your credit. And we'll tell you exactly how we're going to get your scores up. The number is 1-800-USA-7177. That's 1-800-872-7177. That's 1-800-USA-7177. 1-800-872-7177. And call us now. I can only take about 30 people, though, honestly. All right. You can go, Tinker. I have two more calls to take here. That's not a problem. No, take the call. You want to hang? Yeah. Call you USA Credit Repair, the most trusted name in credit repair business. Jessica in the Bronx. Hello. How are you? What's up? I'm good. What's up? So my question to you is, um, I came into the U.S. Um, I don't have a port of entry. Um, will I be able to... Well, actually, I'm currently married, and so I haven't started any paperwork filing as yet. Will that stop me from getting my um, green card? Uh, it'll stop you from adjusting your status, that's for sure, unless you're married uh, to uh, somebody in the military, a former military, or you're a 245i, but you can certainly get a provisional waiver, so there's ways to get a green card. So hold on one second, okay? 1-800-LAWLINK, 1-800-529-5465. Let's go to Jordan in Tampa, Florida. Jordan. Jordan. Hi, sir. How are you? How are you? How are you doing? I'm good, sir. Thank you so much. What's I'm up? really happy to watch you. Every time I'm watching you, I'm really happy to talk to you right now. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, actually, I got been charged for possession of marijuana and barafinella. Uh, I was driving and I had a friend with me, so we've been charged for possession of marijuana. So we went to the court. So my, I hired the lawyer for my case. So he beat me not guilty, and he waived my case many times, and uh, and uh, they put me in BTI. They said if you complete the BTI, then... Okay, very good. Pre-trial intervention. That sounds good. Yes, BTI convention. If you're not making problem yep. and you complete yep. it, so you, we yep. can expunge right. the case. Well, that and expunge I have, the case. I've been here dismissed. for years, and I really want to apply for the citizen. I don't know what the problem is. How, long, how but, long ago did the PTI happen? I mean, they told me you have the BTI for 12 months, but when did my this lawyer happen? told me if you happen? do it, uh, community did, service, when? everything, uh, we can send it to the state attorney. They can dismiss the case. When did this happen? What is this? When? When? What day? What uh, day you when? Convicted? The BTI? Yeah, the BTI, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, BTI, we sign up on uh, uh, August. So, but I start the BTI on October. Okay, so you're not going to be able to do your citizenship now because you got to show five years good moral character. Um, hold on one second. We would have to review all your documents and see, figure out when okay. you can. But you're not going to do it at this moment. But hold on, you need a consultation. All right. All right. All right, squeeze. There you have it. There you have it. 1 800. I can tinker. You can tinker. 1 800 529 5465. The show that never ends. We just keep going and going and going. We're like the Energizer. I'm going to say this much to you. What? One day we should just do the marathon. We will. We're going to do a marathon. How would everyone like to just do eight hours? I can do it. I can do it. Is eight it? hours of this. If you condition just... me for it, I'll get it done. Right. You have a cup there. You can just tinker right in the cup. You're fine. No, thanks. Okay. That's what? No, I said when we do the eight-hour marathon. I'm undressing her on the show yes. right now. Well, yeah. I squeeze is just dying to get out of here. 1-800-529-5465. We're out of here. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. For thanks this. for coming. The proceeding was informational only and not specific legal advice. Consult an attorney about your individual situation. Prior results do not guarantee a similar outcome in the future. To make an appointment with the Sparn Bernstein Law Firm located at 225 Broadway in New York City, call 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-529-5465. Easily remembered, 1-800-LAWLINK. That's 1-800-LAWLINK. Once again, make a call to 1-800-529-5465. And of course, link up with the law offices of Smart Bernstein located at 225 Broadway on the fifth floor. If I were you out there, 
make a call, make the link, make the connection, make it spar and burn speed. 1-800-LAWLING. That's 1-800-529-5465.